This is uh, the 29th of September of 2020. And today's study is on Luke chapter 12. And on this one, we'll also see if I have to put up two videos on it. First, we're going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for this time to spend in your word. I thank you to, for this time to spend in your presence. Hallelujah. We want to be as Mary, Lazarus, and Martha's sister sat at the feet of Christ Jesus and listened to him and learned from him. Father, we want to do that same thing. We come into your presence and we ask you to put a hedge of protection around us. And we ask you to write your word on our hearts and give us more of a desire to know more of you and to get closer to you. More of an understanding of who you are and what you gave us. In Jesus' name, we ask you to upload the video quickly with no hiccups. We ask you, Father, to keep it cool and quiet in here and outside. In Jesus' name. Okay. We're going to read. Oh, makes my eyes water when I, when I think about Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to read Luke chapter 12. In the meantime, when they are gathered together, an innumerable uh, multitude of people, insomuch that they trod upon one another, he began to say unto his disciples, First of all, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known, Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you, whom ye shall fear. Fear him which, after he has killed, who, hallelujah, has power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings, and not one of them is forgotten before God? But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered, Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Also I say unto you, whosoever shall confess me before men, um, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. But he that denieth me before men shall, deny, uh, shall be denied before the angels of God. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that, that blasphemed against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. And when they bring you into the synagogues and unto magistrates and powers, take ye no thought how or what thing ye shall answer, or what ye shall say. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. And one of the company said unto him, Master, Speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consists not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will be stow. I will bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool. This night thou soul um, shall be required of thee. Then those 
those shall, who shall those things be? Which thou hast provided. So is he that layeth up treasures for himself, and is not rich toward God. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought of your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, well, nor as they, they, uh, neither have storehouses not or nor barns and God feedeth them how much more are ye better than the fowls and which of you with taking thought can add to his stature one cubit if ye then be not able to do that thing which is least why take ye thought for the rest Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not, and yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. And if then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field, and in tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind for all these things do the nations of the world seek after and your father showeth and your father knoweth that ye have need of these things but rather seek ye the kingdom of god and all these things shall be added unto you fear not little flock for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom sell that ye have and give alms provide yourselves um, bags which wax not old and treasure in the heavens that filleth not where no thief approaches neither moth corrupt for where your treasure is there will be your heart also let your loins be girded about and your lights burning Whew. Ye yourselves like uh, unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, that he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch or in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. And and know this, thank you, Father, that if the good men of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. And then Peter said unto, the, unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us, or even to all? And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household, to give them their portion of meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he has. But that if that servant say, in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the maids, the maid, men servants and maidens, and to eat and drink, and to be drunken. The Lord of that servant will come in the day which he looketh not for him, and in an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will appoint his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant which knew his Lord's will, 
and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But that he, he that <clears throat> knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given of him shall be much required. And to him men have committed much of him they will ask the more. I am come to send fire on the earth, and what will I if it be already kindled? But I have a baptism to be baptized with, and now am I straightened till it be accomplished? Suppose that ye, that suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth, I tell you nay, but rather division. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two, and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son, and the son against the father, the mother against the daughter, and the daughter against the mother. The mother-in-law against uh, her daughter-in-law, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And he said also to the people, When ye see a cloud rise out of the west, straightway ye say, There cometh a shower, and so it is. And when ye see the south wind blow, ye say, There will be heat, and it cometh to pass. Ye hypocrites, ye cannot discern the face of the sky of the earth, but how is it that ye do not discern the, the time? How do you not discern the time we live in? <sighs> Yea, and, e and why, even of yourselves, judge ye not what is right? When thou goest with thine adversary to the magistrate, as thou art in the way, give diligence that thou mayest be delivered from him. Least he hail thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and the officer cast thee into prison. I tell you, thou shalt not depart hence till thou hast paid the very last might. Wow. I want everybody to be ready when Christ comes. When he calls, I want you to be ready. Because when he calls us, he won't be putting his feet on the earth like he did when he first come. And he will not be putting his feet on like he did will, rather, in the second coming. But he's going to be standing in the clouds. Clouds are going to be rolled back. He's going to be standing up there with them. He's just going to be seeing him. Every eye will see. Every eye will see. Every eye will see that is in him that has truly totally surrendered to him every ear will hear his call come up and you'll meet him in the in the clouds Whew. thank you father so luke chapter 12 verse 1 tells us to beware of the hypocrisy beware of these people that say trust me believe me but they never say study the word ask father god in jesus name Come to him, cry to him, ask him for truth. No, they won't say that. They'll say, believe me. I say, ask Father God in the name of Jesus for truth. Study and read for yourself. Okay? So hypocrisy is pretending to act one way while secretly acting in a different way, often the opposite way. And this is something we talked about in, in verse 11 too. So this is like... The, the leaders of Jesus' day pretending like they they wanted to learn from him, but were actually trying to um, find something that they could arrest him on, bring him before the magistrate. Okay, so Luke chapter 12, verse 1, this is what Jesus was talking about. The leaven was the yeast. When yeast is added to bread, it overtakes it. You put a little bit of yeast in bread or in buns or in, uh, you know, any kind of yeast, even the, any kind of yeast that you put in a sweet roll, you know, anything like that. And you put just a tiny bit in it and a voom, it just vooms up. It just whoosh, like rises, right? That's what he's talking about. Beware of that because the people that say, trust me, beware of that because that could be that little leaven right there 
that's why you need to study for yourself and go to your go to Father God in Jesus' name and ask Him for truth. Okay, because if they give you a little bit of lie, in fact, anyone, you know, the deceivers that Paul talked about, the deceivers that Jesus talked about, the deceivers that the apostles were speaking about here in Scripture, beware of them. You know, they, they're false teachers. Beware of false teachers. Beware of those that look like they're sheeps, but they're, they're, they're ravenous wolves. See, and then you start to hang on to their very word and believe them, and then it, that lie becomes bigger and bigger. And then people, these kind of people will give you enough truth mixed in with that lie to make you believe it. That's why he's saying beware of the hypocrites. Okay? Uh, so, just like uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse 11 to 14, Paul seen Peter... And, and then when he seen Peter, what he was doing to the people in the town there and uh, at their meetings. And when the, and I'll just read it to you. And you see here that when the, um, when the, when the Jews from Jerusalem come down, he started acting totally different. You know, he wasn't eating with, he stopped eating with the people. He started fellowshipping with the other people. Oh, come on now. We will be called out on that. Not just like what uh, Paul did to Peter, but. We will be called because one day, once his body deceases, we will go one of two places. And either way, before that, we're going to stand in front of God and we're going to give an account. Whew. I don't want him to be angry with me. Uh, Galatians 2, 11 to 14. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the, his, to the face because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, so much that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. But... When I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, here you go, before them all, if thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as the Jews, why compellest thou Gentiles to live as do the Jews? Right? Hypocrisy in its best. It's like the Jewish leaders, hypocrisy, hypocrisy, hypocrisy in the best, right? Okay. Luke chapter 12, verse 2 and 3. Um, what's it mean? Nothing shall be hidden. Okay? Nothing shall be hidden, whether in this life or in the next. Like I said, we all have to give an account. Okay? Just like with the righteous leaders, Jesus brought their sins or their dirt to the surface. So everybody could see it, and it was right in their face, and they didn't like it. Me, I asked Father God, show me my dark spots, show me my sins, any dark spots in me that is not pleasing to you, any dark spots in me, because I don't want anything to hinder our relationship. I don't want nothing between me and you. Hallelujah, and that's why I tell him all the time. I ask you to say that too to him and mean it. He exposed their hypocrisy, and they didn't like it. They wanted to stay hidden, obviously. It wasn't, the, see, isn't this like the demonic realm? Yeah, it is. In fact, anyone doing evil doesn't want others to know it. They'll hide it. What about these sex scandals the priests were, these Catholic priests were doing? What about Jeffrey Epstein and, and, uh, and, and the people in power? You know, they're doing the stuff that they shouldn't be doing, most of them. They don't want to be known. What hypocrisy upon hypocrisy. Evil upon evil. So Luke 12, verse 4, I find it interesting that Jesus called his disciples to themselves, to himself rather, and called them friends. Okay? See, Luke 12, 4. Let's look at that. And I say unto you, my friends, 
be not afraid of them that kill the body, and then after that have no more that they can do. Hallelujah. And he called them friends. Now I say unto you, my friends. Hallelujah. And that's not the only time he said that. Let's look at John 15, verses 14 and 15. Okay, John 15. Hallelujah. Uh, verse 14 and 15. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I called, I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. See? Isn't that awesome? Awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, and also let's look at James chapter 2. Oh, wait a minute here. Here's another one here in this James chapter 15, verse 13 to 16. Let's do this. James, I mean, John chapter 15, 13 to 16. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatever so I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for servants knoweth not what his... Lord doeth, but I called you friends, for all things I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye, uh, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he may give it you. You see, over and over, he's saying you're a friend now. What do I do with my pen? Okay. Okay, we're going to look at James chapter 2, verse 23. James, after Hebrews. Chapter 2. And verse 23. James 2.23 And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Hallelujah. 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 I want to be called the friend of God. Hallelujah. Yeah, we see in Genesis 15.6, Abraham, uh, what I just quoted you there out of Luke, well, I'm sorry, out of uh, James 2.23 is also in Genesis chapter 15, verse 6. Okay, so Luke 12 and then 34. Let's look at that. And where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Let's think about this. Okay, this statement is very telling. Okay, uh, this statement told, this, this states that if you place your treasure in heaven, that is where your heart is. Okay, this is an, this is explicit warning, which is made clear in this chapter. Where your heart is, there your treasures will be also. If you put your focus on Christ, there your treasures are. If you put your focus on your family or your husband or your wife or your job or your money or your church or another person, see Jeremiah 17 verse 5, it says if you make man, it says, in fact it says cursed is the man that makes flesh a stronghold. Okay, you don't want to do that. You want to keep your focus on Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if your treasure is on earth, your heart and attention will also be on earthly matters. This will exclude God. Keep that in mind. This is why we're told to guard our hearts. So if you look at it in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Proverbs 4. 
Hallelujah. And verse 23. Proverbs 4, 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Okay? The heart is the seat of our thoughts. Keep that in mind. Whew. It's the seat of our thoughts, the will, the, the conscience, and the emotions. Isn't that interesting? In other words, um, we guard our hearts so we aren't out of right and true and good okay so we are we act out of what's right what's true and what's good that's why we're told to guard our hearts okay just like uh david we need to have a heart that searches and seeks after god's will capital w i l l god's will not ours we also must be hungry for the things of god okay Awesome. So, uh, despite David's failures, he still sought after God's heart. See, as many times as we fall, we still should get up and say, Father, forgive me, and go on. Because Psalms 103, verse 12 says, He places our sins as far as the east is from the west, as after you ask for forgiveness. And you try your hardest not to do that sin again or any sin, but we all have to live in this corrupted, corruptible body within this corrupted world. We try our best not to sin, but if we do, we ask for forgiveness and he is faithful and just to forgive us. Remember that. Okay, we need to seek, search, pray in tongues, desire more of his gifts, um, desire... To be in his presence. Now I did a video here on YouTube channel. It's, it's called Desire More. And I can't remember the rest of it. But it's Desire More. But it's on my list there. So if we look at Luke chapter 12 verse 36 to 38. And verse 40 and verse 43. This is to wait on the Lord. Okay. So these scriptures are telling us. Uh, what we are supposed to do. While we're waiting for his return. Okay let's look at that again. Luke 12, 36 to 38. Let me see what time it is on the clock. Okay. 36 to 38, I'll read, and then I'll put the uh, second video up. Well, I'll start recording a second video after this. And ye yourselves, uh, like unto men, wait for their Lord when he will, will return from the wedding that he cometh uh, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. But blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. For verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall um, come in the second watch or in the third watch and find them so blessed are those servants. And then let's look at 40, what he says. Be ye therefore ready also for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. And then the uh, next one here is 43. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord when he cometh shall find so doing. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, I'm going to stop here. And I'm going to upload this, and then I'm going to record uh, part two. So keep a watch out for part two.